Thank you for this conference. It has been a couple of nice days of networking and knowing uh, about new projects. And I will talk about uh, BSC and what we have been doing, doing recently, especially the la la latest tape out and how open source tools and IP have helped us. So, how many of you know about Barcelona Supercomputing Center, BSC? Okay, so many, but I still see some of you that don't know who we are. So I will do uh, the introduction for you. I know that there are uh, some guys that even stay there when we get the first supercomputer. So thank you, Anton. And basically, we are a public consortium. Uh, we are founded by Spanish and Catalan government and the Polytechnic University of uh, Catalonia. We tackle different uh, projects in many areas. We are around 650 people, and there are four main research groups. So the guys in computer science, uh, we are the ones who look uh, to all the aspects related with uh, computers and computation, from embedded systems to distributed systems as uh, Mare Nostrum. And basically, the other departments are the ones that make the electricity bill expensive. So, now being a bit more serious, these guys uh, are really good. They tackle some of the more challenging engineering and scientific uh, problems, uh, from genomics to uh, nuclear physics. And they use powerful tools like the supercomputer in order to do that. This is one of the most, uh, let's say, unique supercomputers due to the location where it is. So I think that no one will find another supercomputer inside that chapel. You can ask me later on why it ended up there. And we are in the version 4. We will get the fifth version in 2020. And that is going to be pretty interesting. So, regarding the past of BSC and contributions to open source, uh, we have never done a tape out before, and most of the contributions have been related with programming models or uh, improvements on other tools like Gen5 that may be closer to the interest of people in this conference, that is an open source uh, simulator for several architectures. And let's go into the main topic, that is uh, our first tape out. We call it Predrac, because we plan to do another one that is going to be called Drac. And Drac means dragon, that's why I have a little bat with a dragon. I'm sure you have, me, have seen me around with the bats. Uh, this project was a collaboration of uh, three research institutions. We have uh, UPC, uh, CIC, Centro Nacional de Computación in Mexico, and CNM, Centro Nacional de Microelectronica, and that allow us to uh, share the experience of doing a tape out with 17 students from bachelor to PhDs. And what we got is a uh, RISC-V uh, core, 64-bit uh, instruction multiply anatomic extensions. Uh, it's really simple, five-stage uh, pipeline, and it's fully written in Verilog. And uh, we embedded into a system on chip based on low risk and rocket. And we extended this system on chip with several uh, peripherals uh, as a custom SPI and UART that replaced the proprietary IP from Shilings, JTAG and the back ring and performance monitoring unit. So this is a block diagram. Uh, and you, you see here uh, the ASIC an ASIC and an FPGA. So this would be everything what we need to actually get the processor uh, working, running instructions. So on top, this is what we went directly to the ASIC, and this is what uh, the additional logic that we get out of the FPGA. I will explain that in detail. So on the top, we see what usually it's a rocket tile. If you have uh, used uh, low risk, uh, you, you, will fi you will be familiar with it. And what we did is just replace the piece uh, that it's uh, the rocket core 
with our own uh, black box and instantiate the Lagarto core. We still use the uh, cache of uh, Rocket. And uh, now regarding the SOC, that is the remaining blocks, uh, we have extended uh, the low risk SOC with uh, some of the peripherals that you see in the bottom. UR, the SPI, and PMU. On the left is one of the most interesting bits. This is the JTAG uh, modules and the back ring that allow us to do co-simulation. So with the JTAG, we could do a step-by-step -step execution on the FPGA, compare that against Spike, that is the gold reference model, and compare it as well with the model made with uh, Berylator. On top of that, uh, when we move to the ASIC, that is uh, one of the key elements because if uh, something goes wrong with uh, the communication or inside the chip, with the JTAG and the debug ring, we still can access to the memory, load small programs, and figure out if every, everything is working as expected. For the communication, I think that Luis already uh, talked yesterday uh, with, uh, when we, he was talking about the analog IP in the ASIC-1 project. Analog IP is really difficult, and therefore the interface with the memory is not trivial. And we couldn't get this IP inside the ASIC. So we build a small module that break down access requests in different packages, send it to the FPGA, then reconstruct the request, and access this uh, memory through the fee interfaces that there, there are there. OK, so these were the interfaces of the FPGA. Now about the tools, we have talked about many of these tools in during the two days uh, at OrgConf. Uh, I think that no one uh, talked about uh, the UC Berkeley torture test. That is what we use to uh, check, uh, to, do, to run cost simulation between FPGA and Golden Model and very later. And you're familiar with all the other pretty useful tools. Uh, regarding the IP, I already said that we use the low risk SOC, but I would like to uh, highlight also the project's uh, GLIP, Generic Logic Interface Project, and Mohor uh, JTAG uh, Test Access Point that we use in our project as well, and we just integrate in the SOC. Regarding proprietary tools, we still use many of the useful, and some of them were not replaceable, just because there are not uh, still mature enough tools, but I'm sure that next year at OrConf, we will see some, someone bringing some new tools that could tackle over these problems. And regarding uh, the IP, technology libraries, uh, of course, couldn't be open source for now. And memory controllers, you have seen that we already use uh, Shilings FPGA and their uh, memory interfaces. So now looking into the ASIC, uh, we did the tape out, tape out along uh, Euro practice. So we uh, take part of a multi-project wafer and that allow us to, to do the tape out much cheaply. We use TSMC 65 nanometers. Uh, the die is two millimeters by two millimeters. We submitted in May. We received the chips a couple of weeks ago, and the target frequency was 200 megahertz. This is a typical image that we like to show. It's just the layout of the chip. And here is a, a picture of the, with the microscope uh, showing the die itself and the bond pads. Since uh, the chips arrived before expected, that is pretty unusual, uh, we couldn't do many tests. We didn't have the PCB and the bring board. I will show it. I will show some renders later and, and explain how it will work. But this was one of the simplest tests that we can run just to check that the current consumption was what we expected and the clock divider was working properly. So this is the bring up board. There are some components that are not uh, rendered. We didn't bother to do the 3D model. But in the middle, where you see the huge array of pins, uh, what we actually have is a serial insertion force socket, like in the old computers. And you just 
plug there the, the processor. And the interesting piece is in the back. So as I was talking before, we need to interface with an FPGA in order to get the memory request working. So we put an FMC connector on the bottom of the board and this will connect with the Kintex FPGA and allow us to just transfer, transfer data back and forth. Uh, going to the conclusion, so about the open source resources, I think that there are many good cores and SOCs. Uh, the tools are growing pretty quickly. And I think that documentation is still a problem. And I don't think that it's a problem of open source. I think this is just an industry problem. Sometimes you get uh, IP that is poorly documented and that uh, give us a lot of hassle. Also, the awareness. There is many people doing many interesting projects, but uh, sometimes it's fi difficult to find what you actually need and who uh, provides uh, this IP, but uh, nevertheless. And about analog IP, I think that uh, it's pretty clear after two days that we, we need to work into that and it's, it's tricky. But I think that in the future we, we will succeed and we will be able to do complete SOCs rather than just Frankensteining an ASIC with an FPGA. Um, okay, so the, um, the students that work in these projects, uh, they love open source as well and they wanted to implement their tools to make the pain of uh, doing uh, RTL a bit easier. Where some of the icons don't load properly, but uh, the first one is the email and the second one is the, the GitHub. So Ivan implemented some sort of a subset of Verilog that only describe modules and interfaces. And he also did a proof of concept of doing, um, generating Verilog through KiCad, I'm sure you are familiar with. And uh, the point that he was making is, okay, just generate the scripts, the test benches, the shell of the files, and then you implement the logic inside if you want to but just remove the repetitive stuff. And Jonathan Mendoza, that was involved as well in the, in the tape out, was doing a documentation, documentation script similar to natural docs that helped to just browse through the different components uh, in the design and just uh, get better understanding of what is going on. Um, this second project is still not released, but it will be soon. So now thinking about the Next step out, so we will improve the microarchitecture. The current processor was uh, really simple. Uh, there is people working with accelerators in BSC, so it would be really nice to have them along the core. Also, analog IP, there is people working on PLLs. And uh, about the verification, we already had some uh, UVM. And uh, I wanted to use assertions as well, but due to time constraints, we were a bit limited, but right now we, we are using assertions and uh, the verific front end for the new version that is written in System Verilog. So, continuous integration was a big thing. I recommend everyone to use it in their projects, and we will keep improving it. And definitely, we need to do more tape outs because by doing tape outs, we uh, learn, and by learning, we could, we could do better research. So this is the team. You can see that everyone is smiling. That is because the deadline was fulfilled. And this is my contact information. So again, the icons are messed up, but the first one is the email, and the other ones is just LinkedIn, and uh, what is it, Twitter? Yeah, Twitter. So if you visit Barcelona, please let me know. And if you want to uh, visit uh, Mario Nostrum, you are uh, invited. It would be a pleasure to have you there. Thank you very much. You knew I was going to ask a question. I'm curious to know what bus protocol you used within your uh, design. Uh, which bus, you said? W yes, which bus protocol? Okay, so we've, uh, we have Axi, Axi Light, and Tiling. 
and that is just uh, how uh, low risk was implemented. The version of tiling was the first one, tiling one. And yeah, I think that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, very interesting talk. I was struck by the bit you talked about, the FPGA allowing you to single step. And this is more of an observation rather than a question. It sounds like a perfect fit for the lockstep debug interface that Simon was talking about yesterday. So you could run your software and just pick up any discrepancies with Spike automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking exactly the same when we were talking yesterday. Uh, I mean, our implementation may not be as complete as the one he had, but at the point was a good solution and it allowed us to catch some interesting bugs. So yeah, definitely we can join forces there. A fantastic project. Um, so it's called pre-drag. Mm -hmm. There's going to be drag, That's what's right. after drag, and what exactly is the aim point, the final aim point? Uh, the final endpoint of uh, doing the tape outs. Okay, so, so the whole project. Okay, so the whole project. So, Drag uh, is a, a project that is meant to promote uh, semi like advanced manufacturing technologies <laughs> in Spain. So, uh, the final target uh, would be genomic accelerators and also uh, have better understanding of uh, how these sort of projects are handled within uh, the research institutions. Because there is a huge gap between industry and uh, research, and we think that we have to close it. And right now, uh, tape outs are a great way to do it. And let's take the seat again. <laughs>